Hello, my name is Richard Lancaster and uh, I belong to Greenpeace, which is an environmental organisation. And I'd like to thank Mr Webster for inviting me to give a short talk to you this morning in one of your virtual assemblies. So I'm going to start by asking you a question. If I was to say, what do these companies make? You'd have a look at these packets and you'd say, oh, I know what they are. They're breakfast cereals. And of course, you'd be right. They are breakfast cereals. So if I said, what do these companies make? You might look at the bottles and say, oh, I know. Those are water companies, so they make water. But of course, you can't really make water, can you? So what these companies really make is plastic bottles. And the problem with water bottles like that is that once they're finished with, they just become pollution. So in a way, what companies like that make is just pollution. Now, this morning's talk is really about plastic and pollution. And so I'm going to start by a little bit of uh, history. And this man here, Dr. Leo Bakeland, was the man who invented plastic and he invented it back in 1909. And rather immodestly, he called it Bakelite after himself. Now, Dr. Bakeland worked out a way of taking thick black oil and turning it into plastic. And basically, it goes through a process using a refinery and then a, a factory um, to make little plastic pellets like this. And then those plastic pellets can be made into all of the different things that we know are made out of plastic. Things like pipes which go in the ground. And plastic's excellent for making pipes that carry water and gas and electricity because once they're in the ground they don't rust and they very rarely crack or break and they last forever. And the other things that we make plastic out of are things like vacuum cleaners and hair dryers and televisions and radios because plastic can be moulded into all different shapes and it's robust and it's light. But the third thing that we use plastic for is things like the last picture on here, which is food packaging and plastic bottles and things like that. Now, since Dr. Bakeland invented plastic back in 1909, for many years we didn't have very much plastic. Not many people took up the idea of making plastic. But by the 1950s we started making more. And by the 1980s, we were making more still, and that's about the time that your parents were born. The 1950s, when your grandparents were around, there wasn't much. 1980s, 1990s, when your parents were born, you can see we were making a lot more. And then if you look at the bar chart, around 2014, which is the last bar, you can see, which is sort of when some of your younger brothers or sisters, or maybe even some of you were born, we're making a lot, lot more. Now, not all plastic's bad. Some plastic's great. I guess some of you like playing with Lego. And Lego is a great toy. You use it lots of times. And then when you finish with it, you can pass it on to somebody else. Brilliant. But there's other sorts of plastic which are really not good. Things like this. So you can see here we've got a plastic box which has got tomatoes in it. Now, as soon as we've eaten those tomatoes, that plastic's going to be thrown away. And that means it's called single-use or disposable plastic. And the problem is that sort of plastic just causes pollution. And there's lots of bad types of packaging. Here you can see some. We've got, um, we've got bananas, even a peeled banana wrapped in plastic. We've got apples in a plastic tube. We've got a peeled orange in a plastic box. A cauliflower in a plastic box. And perhaps worst of all, we've got some strawberries wrapped in plastic. It's completely bonkers, isn't it? But the problem is that lots and lots of supermarkets now wrap everything in plastic. It's very difficult to avoid. And that means that there's billions of tonnes of plastic in the world. And you can see here somebody sitting surrounded by discarded plastic bottles. Now, what's happened to all of that plastic that's been made? 
well, plastic doesn't disappear, so about 9%, about a tenth of it, has been recycled and about 12% has been incinerated, that means burnt. But then 79%, that's nearly four-fifths, has ended up in landfills, and landfills are just another name for a rubbish dump, or elsewhere in the environment, and that means just kicking around somewhere in the world. And the problem with plastic that's kicking around the world is it gets washed into rivers and canals and eventually gets washed out into the sea. And you can see here some animals that think that the plastic is food and they try and eat it. And especially things like turtles because they see plastic bags and they look like, uh, they look like jellyfish, which is one of the things that turtles love to eat. And if we keep washing all of this plastic into the ocean, well, what's the ocean? Well, I'll tell you what, rather than me telling you, I'm going to show you on a video. So we're going to watch a video together now. And it's a school trip that wasn't quite what the pupils had hoped for. I'm excited to see the penguins. I want to see the otters. I love the octopus. I'm excited to see the catfish. So, that wasn't very good, was it? And we don't want the ocean to end up like that. So we need to try and work out what we can do. And the first thing we can do is that if we have got any plastic, we have to make sure that we recycle it. And anything that you sort out and recycle can be made into new things like clothes and trainers, plastic spoons, even garden furniture. But the problem is that we can't recycle everything. And the reason is there's just too much. If you look at this picture, you can see that uh, these are all of the bottles that were collected in just one day in Bristol. And you can see it's a whopping pile. So the problem with recycling is that if we keep creating as much plastic as we are doing, there'll just be too much to recycle. We'll just get buried in it. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to reduce the amount of plastic and we need to be like this girl who says, I will refuse disposable plastic. Well, it's all very well holding up a sign, but how can we actually put that into action? Well, first of all, if you ever have got plastic bottles, you can try and reuse them for something else. And these pictures show some people who've been quite imaginative. They've used some plastic bottles for planting or even for making a sort of a bird feeder. Then the other thing that you can do is to just not buy plastic. Don't buy water in plastic bottles. Take a metal, your own metal water bottle and then just refill it. And if you see that little symbol, that little sign on a shop window or on a supermarket window, that means you can take your own bottle in there and they'll fill it up with water for free. So you don't need to run out even when you're out and about. And then the other thing to do is to always refuse plastic straws because plastic straws are very bad for the environment. They end up all sorts of places and there's lots of them found in the ocean. Another thing we can do is to take our own cup when we go to cafes. That's called a keep cup and they'll put your coffee or your tea or your hot chocolate in that and then you don't have to get a disposable cup which you then have to throw away. 
Another thing we can do is to get our milk delivered in glass milk bottles from a milkman rather than buying it in plastic from the supermarket. We can take our own bags so that we don't have to get plastic bags from the supermarket. And a lot of people don't realise, but tea bags have plastic in them. So if you can go back to using good old fashioned tea, what's called loose leaf tea in a teapot like this, you can cut out plastic as well. Then if you have got a sweet tooth and you do like to occasionally have a fizzy drink, it's much better to get it in a glass bottle or in an aluminium can because glass and aluminium can be recycled over and over again and are much easier to recycle than plastic. Plastic is difficult to recycle and it can only be recycled a few times before it has to be thrown away. So glass and aluminium are always better. And another thing you can do is around the home you can use ordinary bars of soap rather than liquid soap in plastic dispensers because once a bar of soap's finished there's nothing left it just disappears all used up whereas plastic in soap in plastic bottles the plastic bottles left over at the end and then the other thing you can do is to try and find shops that don't wrap everything in plastic we've got one in Nailsy called simply green and it's a zero waste shop which means that you go along with your own containers and they put whatever you're buying into your own containers or your own bags. And if you haven't got a bag with you, they'll put it into a brown paper bag, which can just be recycled or composted when you're finished. And to avoid all of that supermarket packaging around this fruit and vegetables, if you go to a local greengrocers like this one, again in Nailsy, you can see that lots of the fruit and veg is loose, so it's not in plastic. And then finally, just remember the four R's. And the four R's, one, refuse. That means only buy the things that you need and refuse anything extra. And reduce means only take as much as you need of anything. And re reducing applies to everything, including things like just turning off lights when you leave a room so you reduce the amount of electricity you use. Reuse means use things time and time again. So if you get a keep cup or you get a bag for life, you can always take that to the shops and then you don't need a plastic bag from the supermarket. And finally, if you have finished with something and you can't make any other use of it, make sure you wash it out and put it in the recycling so it can be taken away and made into something else. Now, if you'd like to know a bit more about how much plastic you use in your life, you can check that Greenpeace have got uh, on their website a thing that will help you find out what's called your plastic footprint, which is how much plastic you use. And it will give you some ideas about reducing plastic that you use in your life. But if you're going to use the Internet, do check with your parents or carers first. Right, that's me finished. I'd just like to say thank you to uh, all of you for listening to me this morning and I hope you've had, I've given you a few ideas of how you might help reduce plastic in your own lives. Thank you for watching.